Blobby, oh Mr. Blobby, an icon for better or worse in the UK. What was not so iconic though, was one of the multiple blobby themed tourist attractions, the idea of one town's local council that ruined tourism there forever. Nineteen nineties British TV shows had multiple staple hits that still bring back a wave of nostalgia when thought of today, and perhaps one of the most iconic launched in nineteen ninety one. Running for nearly the whole decade, Noel's House Party aired on Saturday nights on BBC One, hosted by Noel Edmonds, with the show reaching heights of eighteen million viewers at its prime, along with being the most talked about thing on TV, defining UK Saturday evenings in the nineties. <laughs> live house party. It might be my party, but it is very much your show for the next 50 minutes. The show was broadcast live and set in a large house in the fictional village of Crinkley Bottom, a family entertainment show full of sketches, celebrities and hijinks, with frequent audience interaction either from the live audience or at home, featuring multiple regular segments, including the gunge tank, various game show elements, and pranks were a staple of the show's format. One of the more popular sketches on the show would be Gotcha, the segment where Noel Edmonds would prank celebrities. During the show's second season, a newly created character, Mr. Blobby, would be presented to celebrities as if he were a real and well-known children's television character. That celebrity would believe they were being recorded for a real show, so that children could learn about their profession. Speak into the microphone and tell everybody that this is Diana Ross and One Shining Moment. Now remember to speak clearly. Remember to speak clearly. Remember to speak clearly. Remember to speak clearly. During the segment, the parody children's character, Mr. Blobby, would act up, causing mayhem and acting unprofessionally. The large pink figure parody covered in yellow spots and jiggling eyes only communicated by saying the word Blobby. Last followed as Mr. Blobby banged into things and had trouble communicating with their unsuspecting guest. The whole thing was recorded and Noel Edmonds revealed himself at the end in the suit presenting the gotcha. The segment was incredibly popular and after the second season ended, the character introduced specifically for the pranks would become something more. Mr. Blobby's influence had spread throughout the land. The response to the fake children's TV character was huge. Letters came pouring in to the show, the 90s edition of Trending, and Noel Edmonds and the house party team that created Mr. Blobby knew they were onto something special. Since the show aired, Gotcha could not use Mr. Blobby anymore for its pranks, as he would be instantly recognized. Mr. Blobby and his pranks had resonated with the audience, propelling Mr. Blobby to stardom. While he pretended to be the same as you and me, with the popularity of the character, there was nothing in the world he could not do. For the third season, Mr. Blobby was made a regular feature of the show, appearing in comedy sketches, turning up when not expected, and continuing his Blobby mess of mayhem. During 1993, Blobby Mania was at an all-time high. One of the most popular Christmas gifts of the year would be Mr. Blobby merchandise, from dolls and plush toys to drinks. The biggest selling VHS of the year, A Day in the Life of Mr. Blobby, along with CDs and vinyls. Mr. Blobby even released his own song that would top the UK single charts for three weeks, beating both Meatloaf and Take That to Christmas number one. It was seen as a huge scandal. The song is often called one of the worst songs ever created, but put this classic on at your disco in the UK and you'll have everyone singing along. MTV 
MTV accused it of trying to ruin music. Mr. Blobby's music career continued after with Mr. Blobby the album. It featured classics such as Jelly Bottom Rock, Ten Pink Blobbies, and Christmas in Blobbyland. Come on, Mr. Blobby, wake up, wake up! Ooh. It's Christmas oh. Day. Boring. They didn't quite reach the same success. Oh, my Bobby had a farm. Bobby, Bobby, Bob. People either loved, hated passionately, or were terrified of Blobby. Calls came that the UK was being dumbed down with the idiotic character. Some questioned if the UK really wanted Mr. Blobby to be seen as the face of the nation. Noel Edmonds production company, Unique signed a £10 million 50-50 split for licensing Mr. Blobby's face and name with the BBC. They saw the potential that Blobby could bring. Noel Edmonds repeatedly praised the mega success of the character and said he realised the worth of the character when he himself only needed one bodyguard and Mr. Blobby needed five. No hill was too high for Mr. Blobby, Mrs. Blobby and Baby Blobby and the next step would be logical. which has been presenting an attractive annual display of illuminations for more than 40 years now, shows that today the town is still master of the art. Each year since the early 1900s, the Lancashire seaside town of Morecambe filled the promenade of the town and Happy Mount Park with spectacular lights. Called the Morecambe Illuminations, they were at one point considered just as prestigious as Blackpool's Illuminations, attracting tourists from far and wide. A staple of the lights would be the lighting ceremony on the first day of the Illuminations. Over the years, Morecambe had invited many special guests, from James Bond himself, Roger Moore, to Eric Morecambe. And in August 1993, that tradition would continue when it would be someone who unconventional in hue, whose philosophy of life had steered him through, and despite his limitations, it would be Mr. Blobby and Noel Edmonds who would light the Morecambe illuminations. Regardless, of his poor coordination. That song really gets ya. 32,000 people would attend, a record amount for the event. The huge success of the lighting would prompt Morecambe before the year had ended to sign a multi-year deal to allow Mr. Blobby to appear in the town, hoping to bring more tourists to combat the lure of Blackpool and its under construction new giant roller coaster. Morecambe's tourist popularity had been in steady decline and the local council proposed an idea to create a Blobby themed tourist attraction. The Lancashire City Council agreed on the deal, voting 59 to 1 in favour of the £300,000 investment scheme, and it would be official. The deal was signed with a 150 mile exclusivity zone of the character's use. While Morecambe had come up with the idea, outside of that zone, Edmonds wanted more, and multiple attractions had contacted his company to try and get a taste of the blobby pie. Over 35 tourist attractions would be vetted down to one. Come and see us at Crinkley Bottom at Cricket St. Thomas near Chard in Somerset. It's Britain's first TV theme park. Visit Mr. Blobby's house. See the wonderful wildlife parkland. Enjoy family fun in Blobbyland. Crinkley Bottom is 20 minutes from Junction 25 on the M5 and 10 minutes from the A303. Down in the small town of Cricket St. Thomas, Mr. Blobby and his friends from Crinkley Bottom would find another place to have a permanent home at the Cricket St. Thomas Wildlife Park. In January 1994, it was confirmed that the grounds of the Somerset stately home would become the setting of another Mr. Blobby theme park. The first phase was expected to cost £500,000 and open in the summer of 1994. The grand plan was to create not just a Blobby theme park, but bring in other popular TV characters to make a full TV theme park. Firstly, they would build iconic locations from Crinkley Bottom, modifying existing attractions such as the railway to include a Crinkley Bottom station and provide a full family entertainment day out. 
Not everyone was happy the picturesque location would be turned into a blob on the landscape, but the deal was complete, even if they started building it before permission had been acquired. Hopes were high for the Crinkly Bottom theme park. That was expected after the first year could expand to become one of the biggest TV theme parks around, with Noel Edmonds aiming to negotiate rights to build a full BBC theme park, and the future additions could be endless. A recreation of Albert Square from EastEnders and Doctor Who attractions as well as many more, were all in the plans. We are at Crinkley Bottom at Cricket St Thomas in Somerset. There's the whole village and a lot more. We've got Mr Blobby's house here, set in the hills above the village of Crinkley Bottom. I'm sitting on the veranda, uh, looking at the blobby fish and whatever, and uh, the great man is uh, inside at the moment. I think he's just changing. Uh, cr it's, a, it's, a, it's a good place to come for the family this summer, and we've got a big party a week on Sunday to, to officially open Crinkley Bottom at Cricket St Thomas. So anyone want to come along on July the 3rd, you can be blobbed. While much of the spotlight was aimed at the Cricket St. Thomas theme park, the Morecambe idea was slowly progressing and planned to be the first to open. Due to delays, the Cricket St. Thomas Park opened first and was extremely popular. Over 650,000 visitors came during its opening season to see Mr. Blobby's house, explore Crinkly Bottom, and meet Mr. Blobby himself. It was right around the corner from Noel Edmonds' house, so he regularly made appearances at the attraction, which would later cause some resentment with the Morecambe local council, taking some of the spotlight away from the original idea. Regardless, expectations were high for the Morecambe version, which opened just a few weeks after the original. While the first park was located in a private safari park estate, the second version would be located in a free public park in the town. The Happy Mount Park opened during the 1920s and was a staple of the town, and over its later years had dabbled in adding attractions, some more successful than others. The town council wanted to change that and bring some excitement with something that they thought would rival Blackpool and its booming tourism industry. Morecambe was expecting, and needed, 240,000 annual visitors to make the resort a success. The head of tourism for Morecambe insisted that it was the council that came up with the idea for a Mr. Blobby theme park, despite opening second. Early plans for the attraction included a 40-foot inflatable blobby head that would pop out every 15 minutes, a Knowles House Party-style show, a lake filled with pink gunge where you could ride blobby boats, and a forest of glorious TV ride. These plans would be drastically scaled back due to the location chosen in the public park. After construction was barely completed, on July 30th, 1994, Noel Edmonds and Mr. Blobby opened the eight-acre Noel Edmonds World of Crinkly Bottom. Construction costs were helped by sponsors including Mars and Fujifilm. Those visiting could find Mr. Blobby's holiday house by the sea, play mini golf, visit wacky themed houses in the village, and a small parade with Mr. Blobby would pass through the park. Mr. Blobby was here, the guy who puts do in do or die. The song lyrics really are something else. Live entertainment was set to be a huge portion of the new addition, from Mr. Blobby shows to a planned scheduled total of 300 artists performing at the park over its first year. This included stilt walkers, punch and judy shows, and family-friendly entertainment that you would find at the seaside. To try and compete with Blackpool, they wouldn't put in spectacular white knuckle rides, they wanted to concentrate on the charms and craziness of the village of Crinkly Bottom. Morecambe Head of Tourism at the time said that he was proud that Morecambe finally had something to complete with Blackpool. Nobody mentioned that there was already a theme park in Morecambe, owned by the Blackpool Pleasure Beach owners, who were not really very happy about the competition and the council's favouritism for Blobby when they had another park down the street, but that is for a different story. The opening week saw close to 60,000 people visit the new attraction. August 3rd, a few days after opening, Noel and Mr. Blobby once again came to light their illuminations. The opening seemed like a success, and talk began with Edmonds that over the course of Morecambe's three-year deal, that they would be able to add other characters from the show and extend the attraction beyond the summer of 1996. The park thought they were on aim to have 500,000 people visit by the end of the year. This included a 
planned November firework display and Mr. Blobby's Christmas Grotto. They would not. Down in Somerset, the park's future looked hopeful and was extremely popular. The same was thought that that would happen to Morecambe. They tried to promote to the people visiting Blackpool and buses paraded around the town and outside of the attraction to try and get people to leave Blackpool and come to Morecambe. The problem was Blackpool had just opened the tallest roller coaster in the world. And here, you could find Mr. Blobby walking into things, which meant the promising opening's popularity did not last long. Welcome to Morecambe, a traditional British seaside town that in the 1990s became the unlikely setting for one of the biggest business blunders in local tourism. Right away, the park began losing attendance, and throughout the nation, talk began that Mr. Blobby's popularity had peaked. Now he was seen as more and more of a nuisance. The Morecambe part responded with, no he ain't, you can't get Mr. Blobby to appear at a children's party for less than £4,000. Blobby, oh Mr. Blobby, when disaster strikes you never get depressed. Blobby, oh Mr. Blobby, you're always proved that Blobby is best. But not this time. By November 1994, just 13 weeks after opening, it would be closed forever when surprisingly the Lancaster City Council voted 36-12 in favour to close the Crinkly Bottom theme park. The reason the council had given for the sudden closure was that the unique group had not properly developed the project or attracted enough customers to the park at Morecambe. Lancaster City Council blamed Noel Edmonds' unique group, who in return blamed the council. The council terminated the contract on the grounds of the breach, stating Edmonds' unique group damaged the viability of the whole project. They would issue a statement that Unique Group had failed to provide enough creative input, failed to do enough to seek sponsors or promote the park, failed to attract enough people, and that Noel Edmonds did not come up enough to visit the new attraction. A long legal battle between the council and Edmonds Group would begin. Edmonds company Unique Group denied any breach of contract and said that the matter would now be placed in the hands of lawyers. 100,000 visitors in 13 weeks was not a small number for a park but it was a long shot from the projected 250,000. Unique insisted that if it had time to grow, it would have been a success. The Somerset Park was reaching 650,000 and had more visitors than Buckingham Palace. They stated that they had protests and opposition from the start due to the council's venue choice of a public park, which was why the original plans for the attraction were scaled down. From day one, Morecambe residents were not impressed with the idea of turning a free town park into a paid Mr. Blobby attraction, with the Happy Mount Action Group even gaining over 6,000 signatures to close the attraction. There were protests outside the park, and one newspaper at the time said that Mr. Blobby Land featured areas of concrete, plastic, multicolored gunge, and tacky merchandise in, devoted to the biggest freak assembled. Not only was Blobby, well, lobby, but the new attraction would not add any parking, it took away the only tennis courts in the area, replaced the pitch and putt course and the Japanese gardens, along with the children's play area, for a ticketed attraction. Many people protesting wanted Morecambe to be promoted and have an attraction, but the location chosen was just not suitable. A year after closing, much of what had been built was left abandoned. Noel Edmonds celebrated a small legal victory over the council when he won against them for defamation damages when the closure of the park was blamed on him and they settled out of court. After this, Noel Edmonds launched a multi-million pound lawsuit against the council and called it the biggest local council scandal of all time. It was an all-win for Noel, as Cricket St. Thomas Crinkly Bottom would break their deal with Unique Group also. While Cricket St. Thomas wanted to part ways with Edmonds quietly and continue without him, Noel Edmonds had other ideas. He scheduled a public press conference revealing the owner's failures and that they had lost confidence in the management of the Somerset Park and highlighted their disregard for the employees and animals. We are owed a significant sum of money and the tailors can't pay us, which leads one to worry, will the animals get fed this winter? Will there be jobs there this winter? Noel Edmonds was now involved in two messy legal conflicts for both 
blobby theme parks. The lawsuits and controversy with the parks with Noel Edmonds drastically altered the public's perception of him at the time. Many saw him as arrogant and dumbing down the UK. Others loved his entertainment persona. Both theme parks and the unique company were blaming each other for their failures. What was once seen as an empire of blobby lands throughout the UK was falling quickly. Two historic places that once meant a lot to many turned to blobby for more success and were now quickly becoming failures. In 1997, Noel Edmonds claimed another victory over the Lancaster Council, where they agreed to settle for nearly £1 million. The whole scandal had been incredibly public. There were many rumours flying about, including marriage scandals with councillors, and with rising debts, public opinion had turned negative quickly. Noel Edmonds' whole empire was struggling, and much of the blame would be placed on the Morecambe Blobby Gate scandal. In early 1999, Noel's house party, after a drop in popularity, was cancelled and aired its final ever episode. It's an overworked expression when people say it's the end of an era, but for BBC Television, for the entertainment department, for me, and possibly you, it really is the end of an era. I hope your memory will be very kind to us. After 169, bye. The once highest paid TV entertainer's empire had fallen and would go through some hard times as a result. In the long run, the failures would only be seen as a setback. Noel Edmonds wouldn't disappear and would make a deal to once again become a staple of British TV, returning to host Deal or No Deal in 2005. A later report by an auditor cleared up some of the unknown aspects of the lawsuit in 2003. The Lancaster City Council were unlawful and irrational in their dealings with Unique and Edmonds. The report clearly showed that the council were in the wrong, constantly changing the agreement, choosing a poor location for the attraction, and constantly asking for more, making a mistake when they blamed Unique and launched their legal battle. The entire Morecambe Blobbyland scandal cost taxpayers in North Lancashire £2.6 million. The whole situation turned out to be a blobby disaster. Noel Edmonds said that he wanted those people investigated because they cheated the people of Morecambe out of something that could have been very significant. He said he always thought Morecambe was famous for shrimps. Now, it was notorious for fudge. The council afterwards said that since 1994, significant steps have been taken to ensure such a situation can never reoccur. Morecambe came up with the idea for Blobbyland, and it was a spectacular failure that left a poor taste in the mouth of everyone involved. The idea of Blobby coming to Morecambe came from the success of lighting the decades-old tradition of the Morecambe Illuminations, and from the hope to compete with Blackpool. Due to the cost from the failure of Blobbyland, the Morecambe Illuminations would never happen again, running for the final time in 1996. Morecambe's tourist decline would continue as they fully ceded the title of most popular seaside town in Lancashire to Blackpool. The poor choices by the council not only had failed the people of Morecambe with Blobbyland, but had also angered Geoffrey Thompson, who owned Morecambe's other theme park, Frontierland. Investment stopped at Frontierland and the park would close in 1999, hurting the Morecambe tourism industry even more. Today, Mr. Blobby is but a pink stain on the history of the town. Happy Mount Park eventually removed any reference to Blobby and today remains once again a public park and is popular with locals. Just don't mention Mr. Blobby while you're there. At one point, Noel Edmonds was seen by some as the future UK Walt Disney. With multiple parks under his belt, he often teased that more would be coming. His personality has often irked people over the years, with many high and low points. The man who gave the UK Mr. Blobby, for better or worse, has always been slightly controversial, but he is without doubt, scandal and all, iconic in the history of of British entertainment. By the late 90s, Blobby Mania had finally ended, and you may be happy to hear the end of Mr. Blobby, the scary character created as a parody, and his creepy, creepy face. Well, I have sad news for those of you. There is more to this story. There were other Mr. Blobby tourist attractions, and Mr. Blobby will once again return.
Blobby or Mr. Blobby, only you can make us understand. Blobby or Mr. Blobby, your influence will spread throughout the land. Let's hear it for Mr. Blobby. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Extinct. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming episodes. And a special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel. We will see you next time.